Hey everyone, Darryl here with Tested and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be 3D modeling a key that was inspired by the world, The Hobbit. This key does have quite a bit of detail in which you might use a program like ZBrush or the Sculpting Tool in Cinema 4D to achieve the desired look. But currently I'm still learning how to use the Sculpting Tool in Cinema 4D and I'm actually learning ZBrush. But in the meantime, I developed a workaround that I'll show you in this video. This video is actually the first video in a three-part series in which I'll be walking you through the steps that I take in order to end up with a physical key. So I'm I'm excited to get started. I hope you all enjoy this video. Let's head over to the computer. All right guys, so let's get started. I already have everything in here set up. So what I have here is the key. I pulled this reference photo offline and this is what I'm gonna be using to um, model my, my key. The reason why I had this box in here is so that when I'm modeling, I know that um, I need to stay within the range of this box. I like to keep a cube within the work area that I'm working in so this way I know not to go outside of the limits of this box or cube. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So right now I have this x-rayed out. So what I'll probably do is, um, let's go ahead and get rid of the box. So this way I'll come back and check it once I start modeling. But I know for, for the most part that the size of this key that I have here is, um, the right size that I want to have it when I print it out, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to start with a cube and let's scale it down. Let's go ahead and make this an editable object. And I'm going to start manipulating points. So I'm going to move this down here, move this down. I'm going to bring this out. And I'm going to bring this out to here. So I need to add a cut down the middle. And that's about right there. And then the top and the bottom come to somewhat of a point. So I'm going to scale these in. So I'm going to scale the top and bottom in. So I'm going to bring it in like that. All right, and actually this needs to come in because as you can see, it's just a tad bit, it's just a tad bit outside of our reference box. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull this in a bit so that we're right at the edge. And then we can see in our front view that we're right within the limits of our box. Now I'm going to extrude this out and then start shaping it. So let's come to this back area here. Oh, actually, wait, that's the front. This back area here, and we're gonna extrude out. So we're just gonna extrude this out, scale it. So I'm gonna add another cut right here. I'm gonna grab these points at the bottom here. Bring this down. Bring these two up. I'm going to slide this one over. Kind of straighten this out a little bit. And then I'm going to slide this one. And basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to match up all my points to the reference picture. Bring this up and over. I'm gonna bring this down to there. Right now our shape looks weird, but we'll fix that in a minute. Because we have to cut into this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife tool, connect this point, this point, I'm gonna come straight across for right now. Here, 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 and here. So right now we're just doing a lot of adjusting. Just trying to line up everything to our reference picture. That's good. I'm gonna have to add two cuts here. Okay, so I've cut into 
D key. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete these polygons because we don't need them. So all of this can go, all of this can go, and this can go. So these side points need to be brought out some more because they're too far in. They're not lining up. So I want them to be, um, yeah. So I want these to match up. I want this to match up with this. So I'm just gonna copy over the values on the X axis and then paste them. And then that should give us pretty even. And then these will be the same, but just we, being that it's the opposite side, we'll just add negative. And then I'll copy this, copy, and then go ahead and paste it to the other side as well. Okay. All right, so already I'm seeing an issue back here, which I'm gonna fix. I'm gonna view the back. I wanna come in and I wanna connect these lines here. And then I wanna merge these weld. I'm gonna merge these points. All right. So, so far that's looking good. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close this section off because right now this green line is letting us know that we have an open area, which is not gonna be good when we go to print it. Um, so we have to close this off. And plus that it's part of the design that this part is closed off. Um, so I'm gonna go to my polygon pen and I'm gonna start closing these areas off. And what I'm doing is I'm holding down command and clicking over to the right side and automatically snaps to the um, adjacent line. That, and then I'm going to right click, close polygon hole. So, so far we have the back part mostly finished. We're gonna finish up and get these designed here in the middle, and then we'll move to the front and get that done as well. Let's go ahead and extrude the inside here. Extrude. Well, let's do it like this. Zero, T, and then we'll scale in. All right, and let's start adjusting these points. I'm going to add cuts in here so that I can extend this out and connect them so we can get this, um, this part of the key as well. So there's a reason why I'm not getting a full loop cut here for some reason. Uh, let's find out why. So I'm supposed to get a full loop cut like how I'm getting on here but I'm not getting it over here for some reason. And I am thinking it's because something is not connected over here. And that is why. So we had two points. Um, actually had another point hiding under another point. And that came probably because my, when I used the line cut to it didn't connect to the point. Um, so it created another point. And sometimes that, that happens I usually discover it not until I throw it in the subdivision tool because it'll it'll show. And if it happens again, I'll sh during this process I'll show you what it looks like. But the subdivision tool is really good at identifying that that kind of mistake. So I'm just gonna weld these points together. Weld. Weld. Okay. Cool. All right. So that should take care of our problem. All right, so we're good to go. Um, it's just little things like that you wanna watch out for um, that can affect you, you know, uh, down the road when you're um, trying to make this thing look good. All right, so let's go ahead and, and make our cuts. 
as I was doing before. One one here. I want one here. Another one here and one more right here. My cuts there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. this point here and this one here and I'm going to extrude and I'm going to delete these points I mean the polygons or surface areas and I'm going to connect all of these points so weld weld and weld and then I will Weld, weld, and weld. So what that will do is give us our rough shape right here, and then we will start moving these points. So let me get straight. I'm gonna zero this out on the Y, and then pull this out here like so. And then we move this up, up, and then we'll move this one up. And then, let's see, what else. I'll move this one here for right now. So there's a, a bevel on this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, and this is the reason why I wanted to keep this straight, is I'm going to add a cut right here and then we'll pull these points closer together and then that will give us our bevel but first let's take care of the other side and then we'll start moving things in <laughs> pretty good. All right, let's take care of the front. This is going to be pretty much the same. So that is the basic shape of the key here. So next, I'm going to Throw this in the subdivision tool. So throw this in here. Off the back. <laughs> that looks crazy. Um, and that's not what we're after. So I'm going to start adjusting what needs to be a sh kind of have that like that bevel. So. thing that I'm not satisfied with I have some pinching here let's see what that is so all right so it did happen so remember when I said that early in the video that we have points that may not connect and that the subdivision tool will show us um, where it's at so as you can see we have two points that didn't connect and then if I turn on the subdivision tool you see how I have that like nasty pinch there it's because these two are not connected and they're supposed to be so when I weld this back together I don't have that that as much of a pinch there let's go ahead and take care of this area right here
Okay, so let's take care of this piece right here. So I'm going to insert a cube, rotate it 45 degrees. Make it, an editable, make it an editable object. And then I'm going to um, actually I'm going to reset my rotation. So this way, when I'm moving it, I'm not having to struggle. T will expand that out. So this is really, really straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do is select both sides. Extrude in to there. I'm going to extrude, and don't worry about that. I'm going to extrude inner one more time, ever so slightly, and then I'm going to bevel out. And I don't want that many, that much of a bevel. Only want one subdivision. And let's do that again. Bevel. No, I don't want none. Okay, all right. Two more pieces and then we'll be done. All right, we're gonna go with another cube. And this is gonna be pretty straightforward again. Move this up to the front. Scale this down, rotate 45 degrees. Remove this right there. I'm not even gonna bother to throw that in a subdivision tool. Um, I'm going to select all, right click, bevel, up my sub, uh, subdivisions, and then just bevel this out. All right. All right, so one more piece, and then we'll take care of this part in a minute. So there's the key, and for the most part, we are done with um, the modeling process. So let's talk about the ruins for this to get these uh, to get the detail in here. So I use a different method to add details to an item such as this. Uh, what I do is I use Illustrator. So I will go into Illustrator, trace out whatever the design is or create the design in Illustrator, export that out or save it out as an Illustrator file, pull it into Cinema 4D and use the Boolean tool. Cinema 4D R20 actually has a new feature. It's called the Volume Builder. When you use the Boolean tool, um, sometimes or a lot of the times, especially with something like this that is going to have a lot of detail, you have to go in and do quite a bit of cleanup because there may be holes or there may be um, some non-manifold polygons in there. With the volume builder, kind of eliminates all that in terms of what I've seen and how I've used it. So I'm going to walk you through that process and show you how I complete the ruins and then um, show you how the volume builder works. So I actually already sketched out some of these, the ruins that are on the key. So I went ahead and sketched these out ahead of time. So what I would do is I'll go um, file, save as, and then I would save it as whatever the design or file name that I wanna save it as. And then now I'll pull this into Cinema 4D. So basically all I do is drag the file in Cinema 4D, hit okay, and Let's change our view. And then it imports it as a spline. So what I'll do is I'll, being that these are a whole bunch of different paths, I'll just um, create as a single object, connect objects and delete, make sure that my linear is on. And then I'm going to copy this over. And then I will scale this up so I'm going to position this where it needs to be. All right. What I'll do is I'll drop the spline in an extrude tool. So it'll extrude it out. All right. So I have my um, ruin in the right position. So I'm going to, instead of having to copy and paste this and then try and realign it, what I'll do is I will, 
I will drop this in the symmetry tool and then I already have it on the other side as well. All right, so let me show you the volume too. So what I would do is um, I'm going to drop the key in first and it's gonna look really weird and it'll just look like some polygons. Um, but I'm gonna drop this um, voxel size down. And right now this looks really pixelated and rough. The further I drop down this number here, the finer the detail will become and um, the more the more the pixels will go away. Um, but that just eats up more memory, but I'll drop it as low as I can for right now so that it won't eat up too much uh, too much memory. So it, I'll just drop it right there for now. So next I will drop the detail in. And right now it added it, but we want it to be subtracted. So I'll go back into the volume builder and right now it's on union, I wanna subtract it. That looks really rough right now, but again, once I start dropping the voxel size down, everything will start to look much better. Also in addition, we want to combine this with the key. Uh, so we'll select center, go ahead and put that in. And now that's one piece. And this tool makes the workflow much more easier where I don't have to go back in and do much cleanup. Next, I want to create a space for this cube to sit in. So what I'm gonna do is right click, copy, paste, and make this just slightly bigger. And then I'm going to drop this in as well but we don't want this to be union, we want this to subtract. So now, if I mute this out, we have a space for our cube, or that little cube to sit in. Once you print this, the cube will just slide right in here. All right, so now I'm going to uh, come in and add the rest of the details and we'll come back once I have all those details in here. All right, so I'm back. So I have all the details that need to be added to the key in position. And as you can see, um, they've all been positioned. And then you see what it looks like once I turn it on and it's gonna look weird. All right, so that looks pretty, you know, pretty bad. Again, because our voxel size is not dropped down. Really quick, I'm gonna add a smooth layer. That's gonna smooth it out, but that's too smooth. So we're going to, I'm gonna change the filter type to mean curvature and I'll kind of bring our details back. And in order to make this a piece that we can actually print, um, we actually need to, cause right now it's not a physical mesh. So we need to add it to the volume mesher, which actually makes it a, um, a mesh. So I'm going to add that to the volume measure. And once it turns gray, we'll know that we have, actually let me turn it on, we'll have an actual um, mesh. But again, we st are still not getting those fine edges that, or those clean edges that I'm looking for. I'm going to drop this down so you guys can see. As you can see, we just dropped it down by one and we already got those details in there and it's looking nice nice and crisp for the most part but we can drop this down even further so i'm going to go zero zero point zero nine point zero nine and it's going to tell us it's going to take a long time to calculate and we start getting cleaner edges and i'm going to drop this down one more yes i know and we'll get a nice clean edge. And that is, and that is our key. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this out and get this ready for printing. My thoughts are to print this on a resin printer. You can go either route, you can print this on an FDM style printer, print it in PLA, PETG or ABS. Um, my only concern with this is that I feel like my printers are not capable enough to capture the fine detail. I'm afraid I'm going to lose detail. The other option, um, and if you have the option to, um, is to print this on an SLA printer. And that's what I'm going to do for this key. 
So the next video, I'm going to show you how to take this key, prep it for uh, printing on a resin printer. We're gonna print it. We're gonna prep it for molding and casting. And then the video after that, we're gonna actually go through the process of molding, casting, and then finishing this prop. So I thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you actually learned something. I can't wait to finish out this series for you guys and it's for you guys to see the finished product. As always, peace and love. God bless.